from my cold, dead hands. Hey guys, I'm uh, still wearing the same shirt as in several other videos now, so you know I'm just doing a whole stream of these things all in one day. Want to do a follow up to uh, the Glock dragging video. And I know that I already did one kind of an afterthoughts deal, but I seem to be getting a lot of the same comments over and over again. So I wanted to do this video to answer that. The one comment that I get all the time is, I can't believe you ruined a perfectly good gun. I didn't. It's right here. It's my daily carry gun. I added the excess sights and a TLR1. Let's just show you now that it's safe and clear. I absolutely love this thing. It works flawlessly. All I did was do a detail strip, dust it out, and it works great. Absolutely love this gun. Uh, some of the other comments I get are, you must be rich to completely destroy that gun, just throw away a Glock. Did you see the truck? You still think I'm rich? Really? The other comments I get are, next time you're going to just frag a gun, blah, 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 give it to me. Um, no, screw you, earn it yourself, just like I did. So, okay, with that said, let's get to the number one thing that I always get. Should have used a snap cap. Firing pin, should he? It's got a firing pin safety, guys, and I'm going to show you that right now. Now, we already know this is clear, so I'm going to dry fire it because that's part of the takedown process. And we're just going to take it down just in half. We don't need to go any further than that. Uh, I had somebody who apparently had done uh, some combat tours telling me this, that, and the other thing and what I was doing wrong. Um, last I checked, the Glock wasn't the issue weapon. So I'm sure that you've got your shooting time. Doesn't mean you know anything about this gun. No offense. Now, when I pointed that out to him, he called me a pogue. Yeah, and... I've never pointed out or claimed to be anything other than a rear echelon communications computer network wiener. So it is what it is, just like the Glock is what it is. Let's get into this real quick. Now, if you can see here, and I apologize, my blinds are <clears throat> trying to get rid of that glare from the, okay, it'll disappear in a bit. It'll quit shaking. Um, right here, is actually the sear contact engagement surface for uh, for the striker. Okay, it does not cock as uh, as that guy was trying to tell me it did. Push it back all you want. Nothing. Okay. Now he was being pretty darn sarcastic and pointing out this thing, which he called the little round thingy, trying to slow it down for me. Uh, I pointed out that that wasn't necessary. I know he's in the army. And I'm in the Air Force, so, you know, higher ASVAB scores. It's a little inter-service rivalry there, just giving you a hard time. But right here is, uh, that's your firing pin block, okay? Without that depressed, there is no way for the firing pin to go forward in contact. That's why it was kind of a moot point to use a snap cap in the, in the dragging video. This is completely blocking the firing pin. Now, I pulled this out and weighed it on a bathroom scale, and it's weighing in somewhere around, oops, sorry about that. It's weighing in somewhere around one gram, maybe two, well, it's less than two. Kind of depends on how I set it on the scale, it wasn't that precise. But the amount of force required to press that in and actually get it to disengage was like 500 grams. Now, I know you're sitting there saying half a kilo. It's not all that heavy. It's like 1.1 pounds. Surely you can hit that with 1.1 pounds of force or cause, let's go ahead and just put it back on real quick, or cause the gun to be hit with 1.1 pounds of force or 1.2, 1.5, two pounds. Well, sure you can. But is that enough to make one gram or one and a half grams of firing pin block get enough inertia and momentum to overcome that spring? We're talking about 500 times the weight. That firing pin block is staying secure, guys. Unless you pull the trigger and, and physically disengage that firing pin block, it's not going anywhere, period. 
Anybody who has uh, had an accidental discharge didn't have an accidental discharge with a Glock. They had a negligent discharge because they pulled the trigger, period. That's all there is to it. And even if you manage to hit the gun with however much force was required to cause that firing pin block to shift, then you also would have had to get it at the exact perfect angle where the firing pin flows forward or flies forward as well. It would also have to be disconnected from the sear engagement surface. Um, <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. And then let's just say that it's not connected to the sear. Let's just say that the firing pin does manage to move and for, or the, the pin block. And somehow you've got this free floating firing pin then it still has to go past the firing pin block and not contact the firing pin block first and lose all its inertia and momentum. It's, it's an absolutely ludicrous argument that uh, doing the drag test with a snap cap would have shown anything different. Once you understand the mechanics of how the Glock pistol works, it's a non-issue. Now, I should point out, I am not a Glock certified armor. I hope to be going to the course next month, but I thought that that was uh, something worthwhile, something I should point out. Because like I say, it's uh, something I've gotten lots and lots of comments on and nobody ever bothers reading the old comments or my replies. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope that kind of explained the internal mechanism of the Glock a little bit more for you. And, uh, Look for some of my other videos. I've got a trigger job coming up here soon.